Hey, my fellow tech enthusiasts. Welcome back to Binary Tech Labs. Today, I've got a terrifying tale to share with you that hits right at the heart of our sanctuaries, our home automation setups. I love that technology can be like that friend who says, here, hold my beer. It's what makes the relationship special. Trust me, just when you think you got a handle on things, well, <laughs> here, hold my beer. So let me set the scene for you. I have Home Assistant running and a virtual machine on Proxmox. I have regularly scheduled VM snapshots and Home Assistant backups. It felt pretty secure. After all, what could go wrong, right? Well, imagine waking up one day to find your home automation sanctuary in ruins. The once mighty virtual fortress on Proxmox had crumbled, leaving your carefully crafted settings in a digital wasteland. Well, I don't have to imagine. So grab your coffee, buckle up, and join me as we dive into this unexpected twist in my Home Assistant instance. Let's dive in. So let's get right into what happened. So my home automation sanctuary crashed and burned. Uh, the system failure blindsided me, and despite my best troubleshooting efforts, I couldn't resurrect it. In fact, I don't fully understand what happened. The VM snapshot was corrupt, rendering those snapshots useless, which means that the local Home Assistant backups, well, poof, they're gone. Now, I'm no stranger to data loss. I've been down that road before, and let me tell you, it's a bumpy ride. That's why I've embraced the 321 backup method like it's a tech religion. I have three copies of my data on two different media types with one safely tucked away off site. Now, I probably shouldn't be confessing this out loud, especially not where my hardware can hear it, but this strategy is my secret weapon. It's why I can boldly declare that I'm ready for the worst that technology can throw at me. Here, hold my beer. Now, let's peek under the hood of my setup. I've got Home Assistant OS running on a Proxmox server, regular backups, you betcha. But it's not just about the VM snapshots. It's a symphony of backup strategies that ensures that even in the face of a complete system failure, as I experienced, I can resurrect my setup in the blink of an eye. So here's a deal. God, I hate that saying. Learn from my mistakes past and present. Consider fortifying your setup with a robust backup strategy because mark my words, if you haven't embraced the 321 tech religion, your setup is a disaster waiting to happen. Oh, sorry to interrupt the video, but before we dive back in, uh, let me have a quick chat with you. Creating content like this is a labor of love, and your support keeps the gears turning. If you're finding value in what we're exploring, here's how you can lend a hand. Firstly, give that like button a little love, and hit subscribe if you haven't already. It's not just a click, it's a virtual high five that helps our community grow. Next up, if you think this content might help someone you know, share the video spread the knowledge, and let's make our community even more awesome. And lastly, for those that can support the channel financially, you have options. You can check out the links in the description for some affiliate magic. Clicking through and exploring those links helps keep the content flowing without any extra cost to you. If you're feeling a little extra generous and want to directly contribute to the channel's growth, you can do that too. Every bit makes a big difference. Thank you for being part of this journey and your ongoing support. Now, let's jump back into the video. You know, Mike Tyson once said, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face. Well, my tech enthusiasts, consider this the digital punch to my well thought out plan. Now, let's shine the spotlight on that unsung hero, as I mentioned before of this whole thing. And that was my offsite home assistant backups. And we'll dive into the how to later in the video. But thanks to my newfound tech religion, aka my trusty backup strategy, I managed to resurrect my setup on a shiny new VM without losing a byte of vital configuration, automations, or crucial data. However, this tale could have taken a chaotic detour into a total tech disaster. Before this happened, I was under the illusion that everything was neatly tied up with a pretty bow. Little did I know, a punch to the face was lurking. Here's the twist. Nestled within the secret files for Home Assistant and ESP Home 
are where the crown jewels are stored, API keys and other crucial data. Now, sure, I had the essentials for a rebuild. I store all of my ESP home configurations in a private repository on GitHub, which you can sign up for and get a free account and you can save your stuff there as well. However, what I didn't save was those secret files. And while I had the essentials for a rebuild, reality came crashing down. I have over 20 ESP home devices scattered around my place. And here's the kicker. You absolutely need that API encryption key to program or update them over Wi-Fi. Well, without it, you've got to go dig those devices out, hook them up to your computer, reprogram each one, and then put them back. What an absolute pain. I learned a valuable lesson and I'm going to lay it all out for you. So just stick around because next I want to share with you the lessons I learned from going through this. All right. So what are these invaluable lessons this disaster has gifted me? Well, these takeaways are gold nuggets for anyone knee deep in the world of home automation. So lesson one, redundancy is your best friend. Remember when I thought running Home Assistant on a virtual machine on Proxmox was foolproof? Well, think again. Redundancy is the name of the game. If possible, have a backup for your backup solution. Maybe consider setting up multiple instances of Home Assistant, especially if you are on Proxmox, or keeping spare hardware around just in case something fails. Because in the tech realm, nothing shouts confidence like having a plan B for your plan B. Lesson number two, monitor everything. And here's a lesson straight from the Tech Vigilante Handbook, and that's keep an eagle eye on your system's health. Use monitoring tools to track CPU and RAM usage, disk space, and network traffic. Set up alerts to give you a heads up if something's amiss. Early detection is your superpower in the battle against tech gremlins. Lesson three, document, document, document. I can't stress this one enough. Maintain a detailed record of your home assistant configuration, your API keys, and integration settings. It's your secret weapon. It could have saved me hours of reprogramming my ESP home devices if things had gone worse than they did. Consider keeping the documentation on GitHub or Google Docs. Documentation might not be glamorous, but it's your tech superhero cape. Lesson number four, test your backups regularly. Now, here's a mantra to chant every now and then. Backups are only as good as your ability to restore from them. I repeat, backups are only as good as your ability to restore from them. So create a test environment and make a habit of practicing restoring from the backups. It's like a fire drill for your tech setup. When the real disaster strikes, you won't be fumbling in the dark. You'll be calm, collected, and ready to restore. But Here's a personal anecdote, a bit of a rant, and yes, my own mistake, but picture this. I'm on the welcome screen, faced with a decision to create a new instance or restore from a backup. Now, well, duh, of course I chose the latter, forgetting that I added a password to my backups because it's, well, actually I've never restored from my backup, so it's been a while. But here's where it gets interesting, or should I say rant worthy. On the restore side, that spinning HTML progress widget well, it's like a stubborn donkey spinning endlessly, leaving you believe the system is working. It's magic when in reality, it's just failing silently. Confused? Let me show you exactly what I mean. So this is the welcome screen that you are presented with. And if you happen to load your instance fast enough, you will also see a progress of what the system is doing in the background. So as I was saying, from this welcome screen, we can either you know create our smart home or restore from backup. So as I said, let's restore from backup. It's going to take a little minute for it to upload. So we'll just fast forward here. All right, so the full backup is uploaded. And like I said, it is password protected, and, but I feel that any kind of error that you get here at this stage, uh, same thing's gonna happen. So I'm going to not put the password in and see what happens. Click restore, saying you're gonna wipe out your entire system. This can take up to 45 minutes. Sure, let's restore. Okay, 
So this is the spinning widget that I'm talking about. And we see here, restore in progress. And this is just going and going and going. But this has already failed. Now, let me show you what I mean. We hit refresh and we go back. And now we just go the opposite way and I will speed through this as well. All right, so now that we're inside our newly created instance, let's have a look at what's going on. Uh, this notification here, I'm just gonna ignore it's picking up my regular um, devices on my network. So one thing, uh, just click on our username here. We're gonna turn on advanced mode right away, okay? That's just so that we can see a little bit more of what is going on, check the logs and that kind of stuff. So now let's go into our settings and into our system and into our backups. So we can see my backup here that uploaded. Let's double click it. And again, let's, let's restore. But again, we're not going to put the password in see what happens. Are you sure you want to do this? Yeah. Oh, look at that we get a error right away telling us that there was a problem it says see the supervisor okay so let's go see what that error could be so if we go back to settings and then we go back to system now we can go into the logs and up here if you don't have advanced mode turned on you're not going to see this for your user so up here we can select this and then go to supervisor and scroll down and see what happened. Oh, look at that error. Invalid password for backup. That'd be good to know, especially at the front end when you don't get anything. Anyways, as I digress. Now, take these lessons to heart. Whether you're navigating the intricate realm of Home Assistant, mastering Proxmox, or dancing with any other tech configuration. It's not a question of whether or if a tragedy will occur. It's a matter of being prepared for when it does. But here's where I want to hear from you before we wrap up this video. Have you ever found yourself in the midst of a technological disaster? What were the key takeaways for you? Share your thoughts in the comment section below and let's all learn from one another's experiences. Your insights might be the guiding light someone needs. All right, and as you waited patiently to find out, my Home Assistant backups offsite are done through this add-on, which is the Home Assistant uh, Google Drive backup. Um, it is an excellent add-on for Home Assistant, and I highly recommend that you get this thing installed. And it's got a detailed install instructions here that you can just follow. So yeah, this is the add-on that I'm using to get my uh, Home Assistant backups off-site. I appreciate you being here with me on this adventure. I hope you found these insights valuable and that they add a layer of resilience to your tech endeavors. If you haven't already, consider hitting that subscribe button to support the creation of future content. Your support means the world to me. Feel free to share your comments and thoughts below. I cherish the community's input and your experiences could be the catalyst for the next chapter of our ongoing conversation. Your time is valuable and I genuinely appreciate you sharing it with me. Until next time, stay curious and stay resilient. Goodbye.